The newest medical procedures coming soon? Number seven, Fountain of Youth. Ah, the fabled Fountain of Youth. For thousands of years, it's been written about and captured anyone's imagination. Anyway, while it seems pretty much impossible that any such fountain really exists, the medical community has, perhaps, come up with the next best thing. In 2014, researchers at Stanford University conducted a study where they took blood from young mice, infused it into older mice, and, lo and behold, some of their cognitive abilities began to restore. This interesting study involved sewing two mice together so that they shared a circulatory system. They also transfused plasma from the young mice to the old mice, what they found was a reversal in cognitive and neurological deficiencies in the older mice. Assuming such a procedure could be applied to us, imagine some of the benefits. Life expectancy is increasing, but so far there's no surefire cure for Alzheimer's. But these blood and plasma transfusions could find ways to cut off memory loss and improve learning skills as a person ages. Writing for the journal Nature, Tony weiss Corre, the leader of the research team, stated that they also took plasma from human umbilical cords, injected it into mice, and again, their cognitive ability was restored. He said, quote, This suggests that there are factors or components in the blood of young organisms, including humans, that can rejuvenate an old brain and make it work much more like a younger one. So if this pans out the way researchers are hoping, it's going to improve looks, but I guess there's always plastic surgery for that. But these blood infusions from younger people may just help improve memory and learning abilities. Number six, ultrasound therapy for Alzheimer's. Seeing people get old and lose their cognitive ability and memory is pretty sad. Actually, it's really, really sad, especially if it's a loved one you know. By some estimations, more than 13 million Americans will be suffering from Alzheimer's disease in 2050, making it the most common neurodegenerative disease. Not only does it cause people to withdraw from their family and loved ones, but they eventually start to lose the ability to perform the most basic functions and often pass within a few years. To make matters worse, there's no proven cure for this awful affliction. So, in a nutshell, Alzheimer's pretty much sucks. So, in May of 2017, when the first clinical trial for a type of ultrasound therapy to treat Alzheimer's was announced, it generated plenty of interest. Researchers at the Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in Toronto began trials on six Alzheimer's patients to see if they could open what's called the blood-brain barrier. Basically, it's a protective layer comprised of cells that protect the blood vessels in the brain. It's a pretty awesome feature that protects our brains from all kinds of diseases. The flip side, however, is it also prevents medication meant to heal the brain from getting through. The ultimate goal is to create medication that's often blocked by the blood-brain barrier to reach the brain. But doctors first need to make sure that opening that barrier up is safe and practical for patients with Alzheimer's. So the trial phase of the ultrasound therapy is pretty early, but important step in the process. A similar method has been used to treat people with brain cancer, so hopefully treatment for Alzheimer's is on the horizon. Number five, augmented reality. Simply put, augmented reality is a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on someone's view of the world. Also, it's not the same thing as virtual reality, but we're gonna get into all that. Actually, the most popular way augmented reality has been used is probably with Pokemon Go but it has many other possibilities, including in the medical field. Some people have predicted that augmented reality will be revolutionary. The excitement is probably warranted, but it's also worth noting that it's been used for more than a decade in some instances. For example, it's been used by surgeons to monitor patients' data. It's also been used to locate patients' veins using a type of infrared light that displays a digital overlay of veins to help doctors accurately locate veins. Looking towards the future, Proponents of augmented reality hope it can revolutionize medical procedures such as spinal surgery. AR can help make this process less invasive and arduous thanks to an Israeli company called Augmetics. They've created head mounts for doctors that provide digital displays of the anatomy of the patient's spine, essentially giving the doctor X-ray vision. The idea here is that it will allow the doctor to perform surgery without having to make any incisions, allowing for quicker recovery times, and hopefully less expensive procedures. That's just one example, and while a lot of this stuff is in the experimental phase and may have some kinks to work out, the possibilities are definitely pretty exciting. Number four, synthetic blood. As you're watching this video, somebody, somewhere, needs blood. It's often, quite literally, a life or death situation. Nearly 20,000 people pass each year because of blood loss. 
There are deaths that could be prevented if there were just simply more blood available. And while millions of people generously donate their own blood every year, it often isn't enough, and many people either can't donate blood or are sufficiently afraid of needles to the point where they don't want to donate. In 2017, the medical experts began taking important steps in creating synthetic blood. Researchers at the UK National Health Service began trials to see if blood from stem cells will act in the same way as blood donated from actual humans. While the ultimate goal may be to provide readily available blood for paramedics to use at the site of, say, a car crash, the hope for now is to create synthetic blood for people with rare blood types who often have trouble receiving blood transfusions. Alan Doctor, a researcher at Washington University in St. Louis, and a person with a very appropriate last name, was working on a type of synthetic blood cell that's made from purified human hemoglobin, which is the oxygen-carrying component inside blood cells. This might solve the problem of getting oxygen from the lungs to the red blood cells, a major hurdle that synthetic blood is facing. 2017 was a big year for synthetic blood, and maybe one day there won't be any more blood shortages. Number three, cold laser therapy for knee surgery. Lasers always seem like such a thing of the future, almost like something purely for science fiction movies or evil villains such as Dr. Evil and Austin Powers. But cold laser therapy could offer some breakthrough solutions to some of our most common medical problems. Knee problems, back pains, tendonitis, leg ulcers, chronic jaw pain, and so much more. Cold laser therapy is the next treatment that may be able to help with all of that. Using low-level light energy, some doctors and physical therapists have been able to relieve pain in their patients without causing any side effects. According to Berkeley Wellness, this means at the very least, these procedures are safe. However, whether or not they're able to treat the underlying causes of the pain, well, the jury is still out on that one. While research on the method is relatively limited, the FDA has greenlighted several cold laser devices, including a few that can be administered at home. The best thing about cold laser therapy is that it's not anywhere near as invasive as other procedures. The low-level light energy provides pain-relieving endorphins and possibly repairs connective tissues. Number two, regrowing limbs. Let's say you're walking down the street, minding your own business, and someone crazy jumps out of the shadows and chopped your arm off. Or maybe you lose it in some sort of really bad workplace accident. Whatever the terrible circumstance may be, it pretty much sucks to lose your arm. Or really, any limb for that matter. But maybe it wouldn't be as bad if there were some amazing new medical advancement that would allow you to regrow a lost limb. Well, good news on that front. In 2016, a team of medical researchers from the University of New South Wales in Australia announced that they had reprogrammed bone and fat cells into induced multipotent stem cells according to an April 2016 edition of PNAS journal. According to the journal, it's the first step towards having the ability to medically regrow limbs. At the time of the announcement, the team was hopeful that patient trials would begin within two years. Sure enough, by December 2017, an Israeli man who lost part of his shin bone in a car accident received treatment that's supposed to help his bones regrow. Scientists at the Bonus Bio Group took fat tissue from his leg let it grow in a lab, and injected it back into his shin. This sort of stem cell research could be instrumental in future medical advancements as medical professionals look for new ways to combat diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, spinal cord injuries, and cancer. However, political and religious organizations have worked to block funding for research. This is because of the controversy surrounding stem cell research as sometimes scientists worked on aborted fetuses before to learn, which posed serious ethical concerns for many people. However, in the decades since that debate, researchers have used different methods that seem to have calmed down many of the detractors, and maybe this will lead to groundbreaking discoveries. Number one, human head transplants. Um, what? Human head transplants? What is this? Some sort of fantasy by an evil mad scientist? Well, not according to Sergio Canavero. This Italian doctor made a bold claim during a TED Talk in 2015 that by 2017, he would successfully conduct a human head transplant. He'd take the head from one person who was paralyzed from the neck down, remove their head, and put it on a body of a recently deceased person with a healthy body. For the most part, he hasn't really followed through on that promise. What he did manage to do was successfully transplant the head of one deceased guy to another which is pretty cool, but not quite the same thing as giving a living human being a new head. A human head transplant is a challenge completely on another level. It would require doctors to 
diffuse the head to the spinal cord, which literally contains millions of nerves. Assuming the surgeon overcomes that hurdle, there's also the issue of the brain. When a head is cut off in the body, the brain obviously loses its blood supply and quickly, and I can't stress this enough, quickly begins to lose many of its functions. Dr. Canavero is quite hopeful that it will change the way we view life and mortality. What I can say is that if this procedure is actually able to be done one day, there'd be a lot of interesting debate with the hypothetical situations this procedure could bring up. Here's what's next. Look like he was wearing a mask. He of course isn't wearing a mask, but rather suffering from a congenital facial cleft. Not only are the baby's facial muscles cleft, but his inside bones are cleft. Doctors said, judging from the current situation, the baby was only suffering from the facial cleft and his intelligence should be normal. The baby was...